and I've got the agenda. Oh, I then, then I will pass to you, Liz. Excellent. Well done. <laughs> I've no idea who's controlling the slides. <laughs> it, it's, it's Taylor. <laughs> oh, great. Okay, Taylor. All right. Um, so, Amy, can you just keep track of who from the TOC is here? Absolutely. Great. I guess you can check that from the participants. Yep, that's exactly what I'm doing. All right. And uh, today it is all about We Flux. So who do we have from We Flux who's presenting? Alfonso, is it you? No, it's me, Michael. Hi, Michael. Hello, let me start. Take, it, from, take it away. <laughs> take it away already. OK. All right. Um, cool. Shall I share the slides from my laptop? That might make it. Easier. I can keep sharing them if it's okay. You can just direct me to move to the next slide. Oh, okay. Cool. All right. We're Actually, on the before we get started, let's just clarify. We're we talking about Flux coming in as a sandbox project. Yes. Great. Okay. So, um, natural question: What is Flux? Um, Flux is a daemon um, run. It's as an operator. Uh, in Kubernetes, and it takes uh, Kubernetes manifests that are in Git and applies them to a cluster. Um, so it reconciles um, the contents of a Git repo with uh, the Kubernetes uh, database. And really, that is the effect of that is to extend the the reach of your um, sort of your system of record um, to Git, um, which means that you can operate on it uh, using Git operations, which is uh, pretty useful and seems to have uh, chimed with with people um, because it's it's a core mechanism of what has come to be known as GitOps. Um, and here is a, a diagram of, of the, the flow of stuff going from the repo and being applied by Flux to Kubernetes. Uh, so next, yes, thank you. Uh, so yes, that's that's what I uh, just described. Is that um, it extends the reach of um, you know, the system of record to to be uh, Git and, and Git tooling. So um, as was pithily described by Stefan, uh, you can replace kubectl apply with git push. Um, and you can do this also to bootstrap uh, clusters. So um, there are systems we know of, including our own, that use Flux and a, an operator that deals with the cluster API to um, drive the addition and removal of nodes from a cluster, for instance. Um, a secondary thing that Flux does um, that is almost a consequence is that it observes the images that you're running, uh, the container images that you're running in your cluster and goes and fetches uh, metadata about them um, and then can uh, automate the upgrade of images as you instruct it to. Um, and it does that uh, by committing to Git on your behalf and then synchronizing the cluster with the Git again. Um, another direction which we pushed Flux is to um, make Helm releases also uh, declarative and run through Git and Git tooling. Um, so as before, instead of replacing Quebec to apply, um, we've effectively replaced Helm upgrade with Git push. Um, and in fact, that that capability has really driven a lot of uh, people to to the community because I think that was something that's uh, complementary to the other stuff that comes with Helm, which I'll cover in, in, a, in a wee bit. Uh, next slide, please. So um, we think it's really important to set boundaries on the scope of um, what stuff does, and, and Flux is really aiming to be at an angle approaching 90 degrees to other things that are in the Kubernetes ecosystem. We want to do one or maybe two jobs well and not try and uh, get on other people's lawn. So 
we're not trying to um, replace continuous integration. We're trying to work with it. Um, we're not trying to replace other operators or um, service uh, meshes or things like that. We're trying to work with them. Uh, and the examples there, another example is um, secrets management. Um, the idea being that if you're using sealed secrets, for instance, um, Flux will create the resources for you, but then it stops there and lets um, sealed secrets or whatever other operator take over. Uh, we're not trying to be a, a, a packaging or templating solution. What we're trying to do, as with the Helm support, is work with those solutions um, to you know, extend their reach to Git and make them declarative where necessary. Um, and similarly, customize, um, which is uh, on its way to becoming part of, sort of core Kubernetes. And we're also not trying to do sophisticated uh, rollouts or, um, or really sophisticated continuous deployment. Um, that is better done, at least in concert with, with other tooling like um, Flagger, uh, Istio, and, and so on. Next, please. So these are all users that have um, added themselves, um, or at least are on in our README as production users. Uh, and right in the middle there, we use it ourselves, of course. OK, that's time enough for a scan, I think. Thank you. Um, so uh, Kyle, if you don't mind decloaking and just saying one or two minutes about how Under Armour uses Flux, that'd be cool. Sure, yeah. So I guess just to give a little background, uh, when we started our Kubernetes journey um, at Under Armour, what we started with was putting all of our manifests into a single repository so that it was easy for everyone at the company coming in to learn what Kubernetes specs look like, how other people are using them, just kind of learn through example. Uh, and one of the things that we realized really early on was um, relying on developers to do kubectl apply themselves can kind of leave you into some sticky situations where uh, a PR may hang for a long time, but someone's actually applied it to the cluster, or you just don't know the state of what's in the cluster as compared to what's in Git. And we happened to stumble upon Flux, and we really liked its uh, trim down mentality of just do this one thing really, really well. Uh, so we started to apply that uh, to our cluster, and we saw the benefits almost immediately. Uh, we never were questioning uh, what was in the cluster. We could just look at the master branch in the repo that Flux is looking at, and that's the source of truth. And it's Flux is making sure that it uh, is in sync, and we weren't having problems anymore with like, oh, did this actually get applied? Or I made this change, and it blew away someone else's manually applied change. It was just feeding everyone back into the into Git, and that was the source of truth, and it was so much more clear. Uh, and now we're starting to take this one step further where we want to have uh, Kubernetes, uh, multiple Kubernetes clusters for that represent a region. Um, and Flux has been super clutch in this situation because when we, uh, I were, I'm an uh, infrastructure engineer at Under Armour, and when we spin up new clusters, we'd have to like, uh, tell other people, hey, there's this cluster here, you can put your stuff on it now. Uh, with Flux, we don't have to do that anymore. We can just do that work and unbeknownst to the developer, now their their stuff is running because Flux is making sure that it's applied to that cluster. So we, we have three clusters that represent the US region. Uh, if things are going wrong with it, we can shift traffic to one of the other clusters or if we take a cluster out, we can you know upgrade it, bring it back up and we know that all the apps will get deployed onto it. So. It's been a super clutch tool for us as uh, in our Kubernetes journey. Brilliant. Thanks very much, Khan. All right, that's fun. Wonderful. Okay, so um, other things you could do. Um, there's uh, this is representative. There are, there are more things um, I just wanted to cover, kind of two flavors of them. Um, there's Jenkins X, um, which sort of gives you a, a toolkit for setting up. Uh, pipelines for continuous delivery. Um, there's 
there's definitely overlap here. That, you know, I don't think it's out of the question that Flux and Jenkins X could sort of work together, but um, a significant overlap there. So that you could consider that an alternative. Um, and Argo CD um, it also based on similar ideas to, to Flux um, and works with some other things from uh, Argo project. Uh, and like I said, there it's close in spirit to Flux and is just a bit a bit newer. Uh, has some newer ideas in some ways. Sorry, yep. Yeah, can go to the next one. Thank you. Um, there's some other projects which may be less in the way of alternatives, but um, that people might think of um, when they're looking at this stuff. So Spinnick is definitely one of them. And I think the main way Flux would compare with Spinnaker is that is Flux is really trying to do one thing quite mechanically simply. Um, Spinnaker is quite what well, we are told anyway. It's quite a complex platform, and it's not. It is a platform, whereas Flux is really a, a tool. And it's not trying to be an all-encompassing platform. Um, so yeah, it might be a sort of lightweight versus heavyweight comparison. With, with Spinnaker. Um, Helm also would come up, I think, in people's minds. Um, I would say Flux is complementary to Helm, and, and in fact, um, our Helm operator makes them work together, and it, it is pretty um, uh, popular. I think probably some, the majority of people using Flux are also using the Helm operator. Um, customizers is sort of newer to. Um, to our support. In fact, it's not even in a, a full release yet, um, but I would say similar things for customize. Um, and with those, we're not, we're not really trying to replace those. We're trying to be complementary to them to, to sort of add the, the good bits of flux to, um, to those other tools. Uh, another thing that might come up is why don't I just write my own or can't I just drive this from continuous integration? Um, you can, of course, and that, that works pretty well. Um, I think Flux is maybe more in the spirit of Kubernetes of having a system of record and then a reconciliation uh, process, whereas um, continuous integration tends to be more event-driven. Um, and again, we are not trying to be a, a sort of general pipeline thing. We're just trying to do the one job well. Um, you can use Flux. Uh, composed with CI pipelines by driving image releases from the CI pipelines. Next, please. Thank you. Um, I'm not going to dwell on this slide. Um, people can go back and refer to it if they are interested. Um, except to say that for quite a long time, uh, Flux was really at all driven by our own requirements. Um, although it was always open source. And the one thing that really brought uh, a lot of interest from, from and more, built more of a community around it was the, the Helm support. Um, well, actually two things, Helm support and the idea of GitOps, um, which was you know, maybe a year or, or so, a year and a half after we were, started developing Flux. Uh, next, please. Ah, right, community, yes. Um, I'm going to invite Daniel uh, to talk a bit about community. Sure. Um, so yeah, as Michael said, and you can, you can also see it from the, from the graph, um, things changed dramatically since um, the initial Helm support was, uh, was released. So we've seen more and more people come in and contribute to the code, but People also wrote uh, documentation, they wrote blog entries. Uh, we had a, a number of different integrations built. So one of the first ones was um, integrating Flux with Slack. And then everybody tried to figure out like, how can we do things the GitOps way? So Helm releases, Istio Canary deployments, OpenFuzz. Uh, people really wanted to, to figure this out. And um, people have given talks and, and workshops independently of us. And it's, it's really nice to see. And this is also why um, over time we had to start, you know, um, 
you know, building more structure, like having monthly calls, uh, having a community mailing list and having a bit more process. Um, but in general, like um, all our trends are going up. We're also seeing more people uh, contribute to the code. So we have already around 100 contributors. And um, while still a lot of them are like drive by contributions, people who want to uh, make things work for their uh, for their own deployments or, or fix the issues they are seeing. We also see a lot of people come back and, and stay with the project. Cool, thanks Daniel. Uh, quick, um, it's more of a status thing than a roadmap perhaps. Um, so some stuff we've added recently, um, uh, two themes on that. One is being a better sort of um, Git tool um, by supporting signatures, GPG signatures. Um, and then the other theme is uh, being a more sort of widely applicable tool. So up to now, Flux has supported essentially uh, YAML files, flat Kubernetes manifest and YAML files. Um, and we have added support for um, driving things like customize um, from, from Flux. Um, recently, and things that we and the, um, the theme continues stuff that we're hoping to finish soon uh, by having supporting Git repos that we only have read access to, um, and we're ho also hoping to release a 1.0 uh, have a 1.0 release of the Helm operator and stuff that's coming up uh, supporting more than one Git repo. Uh, and Helm v3 is, is uh, no longer looming on the horizon, but is a, a fact in the world. So we will have to look seriously at that, of course. So why the CNCF? Um, we are getting more contributions from outside and people are sticking around and making more than one contribution and, and in fact, hanging out in, in the Slack channel and helping other users and giving talks and so on. CNCF um, is a good way, I think, to, to have a, a kind of neutral venue where that stuff can happen, where uh, some people might be put off by the fact that the, you know, the property belongs to, to WeaveWorks specifically. Um, and given that it's open source, we don't really want to put those people off, but rather they felt like uh, there was not that obstacle in a way. Um, there's also, you know, quite a lot of alignment. Um, if we think of um, Flux sort of adding the Git superpower to, to Kubernetes, that um, can also add that to Helm and Customize and other things that are in the, the family. Um, and another reason um, that is particular to Weaveworks is that uh, it worked well for, for Cortex, um, which I think is you know, uh, gone from strength to strength since um, being adopted in the, the CNCF. Next, please. So here are some of the ways it aligns. I've actually covered these, I think, largely, but just to reiterate. Um, Flux is, is, in theory, it's not, it's, a, it's um, abstracted, it's not tied to Kubernetes, but the implementation is definitely tied to Kubernetes. It's strongly influenced by how Kubernetes works as well. So that's another tie. Um, and it can be not only used to um, run applications, but it can be used to bootstrap and manipulate Kubernetes clusters. So it operates on, on the infrastructural level as well. Um, it, we have Helm support that's first class, um, uh, if not in quality, it's not a 1.0 release just yet, um, although it's widely used, um, then it's, you know, it's um, first class supported with the Helm operator, it's its own thing. Uh, and customize also part of the Kubernetes family. Um, as I mentioned, we now support generating manifests uh, in the Flux daemon. Um, which would also work with other things, but it was, it was designed largely to support customize first and foremost. Okay, and I think, yes, 
we now move on to questions uh, and offers of sponsorship. <laughs> Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you, that was great. Um, right, questions. So uh, I'll start off. Um, can you go into some detail on the, the relation between Flux and Weave Cloud? Yes, that's a good question. So uh, Flux has a, uh, a plugin interface, if you like, where it can connect to an upstream service um, and the upstream service will relay commands to, uh, to the Flux API. Um, it's the same API that you can access directly um, via the, the command line tool Flux Kittle. So all the service is really doing is proxying there. Um, it will also relay events, um, such as when it makes commits or syncs uh, commits to the upstream service. You can run FluxD, um, and a lot of people do, without Weave Cloud at all. Um, there's also a, a, an open source implementation um, of the upstream service called uh, Flux Cloud um, that Justin Barrick made. That's on GitHub. Is that um, enough detail? Plus, we use it. We use Flux to deploy with Cloud itself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, and, and and I get that it can be used without without Weave Cloud. I think one of the things, just through the lens of sort of the CNCF, how tight is the connection there? So, like, you know, looking through the repo, one of the things that I would be looking for is to have Weave Cloud be one option of many for these upstream type of services, which means taking, you know, removing some of the the sort of hard coding of Weave Cloud being the default thing. So like when you give it a token for authenticating to the service, you know, I would expect that you would also have to say, I'm authenticating to Weave Cloud. Whereas right now there's this default assumed that of course you want to connect to Weave Cloud. That's natural when it's actually a, a project that's sponsored by a company. But as it moves into the community, I would expect that that we would actually be making those, those that relationship more uh, explicit both in code and and in documentation and such. Yeah, fair enough. So um, the, I think the default is actually not to connect to anything. Um, but yeah, uh, there's probably you know, hard coded strings in there somewhere. Is um, well, yeah, I'm, I'm looking at like the, usage the, or something. Yeah. The Helm chart, you pass in a token, and it just assumes oh, that the cloud weave works, right? Yeah, okay. um, All right. Yeah. yeah, stuff like that. I you know. Um, I, I, I think, like yeah. So there's there's no there's no um, ties in terms of protocol, if you like. Um, right. I, yeah. It's it's one of those things where it's just you know, it's 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 the, the defaults and documentation all points to weave, and I think just you know to engender a real sort of active community, really opening the door for that to be um, multiple. Uh, uh, you know, implementations on the back end and, and encouraging that I think seems like a good thing. Yeah, sure, it makes sense. Um, no objections here. Um, the, I mean, the, that sort of stuff we would want to tidy up, uh, sorry, not exactly that sort of stuff. Things like the API, the, um, the format of the events it sends upstream, uh, it's overdue for kind of being rationalized slash, you know, tidied up a bit. Um, that could happen at the same time. Yeah, no, and I did see that there was an independent implementation of that stuff, so that's actually yeah, really good. But it's not, you know, it's not well documented or something, or yeah. it's not documented outside of the code itself, if you like. Yeah, and I think that's that would be awesome to actually see, like, hey, if you want to actually send this to someplace else, here's, you know, how it's documented. Oh, you want to send events to Splunk or what have you, right? Like, you yeah, know. right, right. So, exactly. If we want to support, um, a more generic kind of sending events, just you know, webhooks style. Then uh, it would, uh, well, it could work now, but it would be better if it were, had a bit of design input and so on. I'd also like to chime in on that. At Under Armour, we do use the Flux Cloud open source tool uh, to send the messages to Slack, and it's it is really nice. Uh, the 
the integration was super easy. It was set it up as a sidecar alongside the flux pod or in, inside the flux pod and it sends events to it. I just had to point it at uh, the flux cloud pod or container and then hook it up to our Slack channel. And we have a Slack channel that all the flux messages go into. Or just to be clear, so flux cloud is the independent implementation of the endpoint that it talks to, which is different from Weave Cloud, <laughs> which is yeah. the commercial thing that Weave does, but Flux Cloud is open source. Okay, I'm just yeah, that's right. watching it at home. <laughs> that's right, and it was written by um, Justin Barrick, who's now at Mises Fair. Um, I have a question on uh, this is uh, Jeff Brewer. I, full disclosure, I'm uh, into it, so um, and we did the uh, Argo. Um, an Argo CD project, and I, we've been looking at you know some um, possibilities of, of merging the the Argo CD with with Flux a little bit. Um, but I was kind of wondering that there seems to be like a philosophical um, difference in you know having each each individual one of your clusters um, running the operator, looking back at um, a Git repo and you kind of wonder like well how does how if you have like a pre-production cluster and a production cluster how you know how exactly does that work it's, and the philosophical difference with having a cluster that's kind of dedicated to continuous delivery over multiple clusters which is kind of the argo um argo cd approach um and i'm wondering like how you guys think about and we'll have more discussions on this offline but how do you guys think about that um, you know, a centrally managed or a, a central CD service um, versus having the operator run on each individual service. Does that make sense? Yeah. So I naturally kind of have thought about uh, things like. Uh, Um, I think the answer in respect to how Argo CD works is um, Argo CD um, kind of spins up workers for each Git, re Git repo, um, and Flux CD is more like the same process of Argo. Um, if you get what I'm saying. So I don't, I don't know if I would um, describe them as philosophically conflicting, maybe more like starting from different places. Um, and just to add a bit more, coming from the other direction, things like multi-cluster, I think um, that's, it, it, it's sort of better in a way to stick to, well, at least I think it's better to stick to one thing and let that be an enhancement um, for other people to put together, perhaps. I see. So, can you guys hear me okay? It was cutting out a little bit. Yeah, I can, I can hear you. Oh, okay, so I, um, so you're saying like from a, like the the thing that stitches it together. I guess that would be like what the weave works provide would be like the philosophy would be like allow have each each cluster you know man you know keeping their own state have the service operators running in each cluster but then have some central tool that 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 more the the user experience or the developer or the, the the devops experience tie the multiple clusters together and that way you can see what the state yeah. of the of the CD is across all of those. That, that's kind of the idea. Yeah, I think so. I think it, it crosses over into sort of user experience, user interface, um, how, you know, there's, there's lots of ways of putting those things together and different ones that make, that make different sense. So it's, it's up to um, you know, vendors or individual companies or whatever to, to do that and use it, you know, Flux as a piece in that rather than the whole thing. Right. Specific right. flux to either bit of software. Cool. Thanks. 
Hello, uh, this is Lee Zhang from Alibaba, and we are evaluating uh, GitHub solutions, and we really like uh, Flux approach. So one of the questions is uh, how Flux is dealing with the, the road strategy of your applications. So you, you are actually building interfaces between uh, different kinds of continuous delivery system, or Flux has its own strategy, or just relying on Kubernetes road strategy? So Flux mostly relies on Kubernetes to do rollout work. Um, Um, this makes some things tricky. Um, so it's possible to detect sort of um, unqualified success of a rollout, but it's often difficult to diagnose failures um, or, you know, whether something is just taking a while um, or has is never going to succeed um, unless people have, you know, taken pains to configure it that way. So um, yeah, the, the, the superficial answer, if you like, is that we leave rollouts to Kubernetes and we try to do our best to observe what's happening and report that back. Okay. Yeah, that you you might wanna, this is where you might, you might wanna check out the Argo rollout. Um, there's an Argo rollout project that has Canary and Blue Green rollout strategies. And this is where it might get interesting from a combination standpoint, right, is we can have we could have a project that that really that allows you to implement different different rollout strategies, and then that's separate from Flux, which is really or or Argo CD, which is really about um, which is really about matching the 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 uh, the GitOps piece, right? Matching the the GitHub repo with the state of the cluster. But um, but look at Argo rollouts for the for the blue green or the canary or, or a different um, rollout strategy. And I think yeah. they should work, they should work together, right? So. Yeah, yeah, Argo CD is also um, what we are looking at as well. And we are really hoping to see if we can combine these two things together. So for example, you can actually um, integrate Flux with Argo CD with something like uh, Spanaker. And so we have, we all have different kind of role systems. And of course it can integrate it with Kubernetes itself. Uh, I don't know if yeah. this uh, direction of the community, do we, are we thinking about an uh, interface between Flux with different CD system? Sorry, what was the question? Uh, I'm, I'm asking, do we have any roadmap or plan to have an interface between Flux with different kind of CD system so we can deliver applications to different kind of uh, environments. I think it depends on what the CD system is in some uh, respects. Continue, continue delivery system. Like, uh, for example, you can use, uh, we are hoping to see that if we can use Flux to integrate with Argo CD, but we can, but maybe it can also work with Spinnaker. So, so is that out of box integration ready in the community or we have a plan to do something like interface between these kind of things? I, I don't know whether Argo rollout works with um, Flux. If it does, and it's very plausible, um, that would be amazing. Um, there's also Flagger, um, which is a WeaveWorks project, which is um, has a similar uh, aim, I think, to, to roll out, Argo roll out um, in doing sort of higher order deployments like uh, AB, um, in blue green deployments, canary deployments, that sort of things using service mesh things, Istio and so on. Um, I don't know about Spinnaker. Sorry. Okay, good. Thanks very much. So I saw the, you know, on the things that you want to do is um, support. Uh, read only get repos where you're just pulling from it. And I think that actually will probably aid integration. I mean, for those not too familiar with the project, um, it actually has two modes. It, it writes status back into, into the, the Git project in terms of which cluster is synced, and you just mentioned that. And it also has a workflow where if you push a new image, it then goes through and actually rewrites the 
referenced the new image, essentially have you sort of upgrade the image and then gets triggered to deploy it. So there's sort of a write git and read git flow that are built into Flux. Um, is that correct, my understanding? Yeah. Um, so Jeff, Jeff, could you mute That's Matt when you're? Thanks. Yeah. So there's at present there are two reasons that Flux needs to write git on your behalf. If you don't care about that, then there is the other um, more historical reason, which is that it keeps a high watermark. Um, it, using a git tag. Um, so the, there is a PR open uh, sort of halfway done, say, for moving that high watermark into the version, if you don't care about the automation. And that way you can have just a purely one-way flow from, from Git to Kubernetes, which um, I know a lot of people would prefer. I think one uh, just observation really that uh, it's not so much Flux specific, but I think um, is an interesting aspect of GitOps is the, um, the audit trail that you kind of get automatically by having all these cluster operations recorded in Git commits, which is really nice from a security perspective. So that's just something I wanted to throw out there. I actually think that there's an opportunity here to actually standardize on sort of the audit sync format between um, different set of tools so that, you know, we're going to have a bunch of things that are acting on behalf, being able to, to throw those into a common audit log sync for, for tracking would be interesting, but that's a, that's a different project. <laughs> Okay, any other questions or observations or worries about Flux? Okay, um, I think that was really great. Um, does anybody on the TOC want to volunteer to sponsor at this point or do you want to take that offline? Michelle's saying she'll sponsor. Yeah, I'm ha happy to talk about it more offline. Yeah. Great. Okay, cool. Thank you. All right. Great presentation. Thank you very much. Thanks. All right. Is that the end of the slides, Taylor? Is there anything else? That should be it. Yep, yeah, that's it. Great. Okay. Well, everybody gets a quarter of an hour back in their lives. So uh, thank you very much, everybody. Good to see you all. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, everyone.